Hey folks, back again. Uh, just letting you know, yesterday uh, I'm trying to beat the storms that are coming in tonight. We're supposed to get a couple inches of rain and I'm trying to beat the storms. But what I ended up doing is I ended up, you can look, see that dark strip. That to right down to right there would be my green beans. And from there down to the end that you see there, as well as this strip coming down through here, that is going to be my corn. Uh, and I grow, um, it's called candy corn. It's very sweet, uh, great for grilling. If you like uh, grilled corn, uh, it's, it's hard to beat with a good steak. Uh, steak, uh, ribs, anything like that. If you, if you, you know, grill your ribs, whatever, uh, it's, it's very, very good with them. Uh, the other thing I did is I went ahead and I got this done here. I planted from right in here on this all the way down to roughly right about there is my um, purple hole peas, pink eye purple hole. And then down through there, the rest of the way, that's cucumbers. And they're both viners, so they're gonna take they're gonna take real advantage of, of this fence right here. They'll they'll climb up all over that thing. Uh, they're really gonna you, you you'll be amazed at how big they'll get. Uh, but then uh, the other thing that I did was uh, uh, get my hills ready i did that this afternoon i'm working 12 hour days right now so it's kind of tough to do all this and everything else i have going but i just make a little mound i don't know if you can tell it or not but it's just a little mound you, you don't have to have it real high like you know five or six inches high i've got one there two right over there one on that corner one right there and one over there and what i'll do in these is i'm going to plant squash zucchini uh, and uh, what the other one is the uh, butternut squash. Uh, I haven't grown that before, but uh, everybody says, man, that's the one you, if you, if you like squash, that's what you need to grow. So I'm gonna try it. And then down here on this end, I'm gonna actually plant my okra. And I'm gonna show you real quick what I do when I plant my okra. I'm not scientific about any of this stuff. This row right here, uh, I didn't mess with pulling my string on this last row. But all I do is, this, you can see I've got a stick in my hand. That take that stick and then I'll take and just make me a trench right down through there. And I'll, I'll do it until I get it, get it deep enough to suit me. And that's what I do on all my other stuff. My corn, my green beans, my uh, um, purple hole peas. That's, that's is exactly the way I did it right here. And you can see I'm just trenching it out and I get it, uh, you know, depending on the seed, uh, you want it, you know, at least a half inch to an inch, depending on the size of your seed. The bigger the seed, the deeper you want to plant it. And I just take it and go down through here and do it like that. And I'm not going to plant a lot of okra this year. I had so much okra last year, it was ridiculous. So anyway, I'm cutting back on a lot of things this year, as well as the garden next year. I'm going to downsize the garden. Uh, I end up growing so much stuff that I you know, can't find enough people to give it to and, and we can only eat so much. My wife and I can only eat so much and I'm basically from, from that guy wire off that telephone pole to my right, to your right here, to all this, I'm turning back into my yard for my uh, wood drying kilns. Uh, and then the rest of that that you see that way will all be my garden, the lower end. But anyway, that's the plan. Uh, and okra, I don't have it out here, but I keep my okra in the freezer. And people say, well, why do you do that? An old man taught me this years ago that if you've got your okra and you'll put it in a freezer and keep it cold, even just overnight, you don't have to keep it in there year round. Put it in there overnight and let it get good and cold. When you bring it out and you put it into the ground, and in, I, a lot of times I'll use my potting mix and cover it because that's that black I talked about. And if you'll do that, what he called, he, he described it as cracking the dormancy on the seed. And what that basically boils down to is it's really cold and you bring it out and you put it in that nice warm soil, it will make that, because the, the okra seed's real hard and it will make that seed pop when you wet it down and it gets that heat to it it will make that seed pop and I guarantee you every okra plant or every, every seed that you put in the ground will come up. And then you basically, I, all I'll do, I plant them every so far and then when they pop up, 
Then what I do is I'll take them and I'll, I'll let the, I'll get the biggest, prettiest one and I'll cut the rest of them down once they get to a certain size. And boom, you'll have ochre plants that, you know, at least mine, uh, I mean, I end up with them, I don't know, eight, nine feet tall. Pretty, pretty tall plants, but just loaded with okra. But yeah, you, when you see it later in the year, or if you keep up with my videos and you see it later in the year, you'll you'll understand it's like, wow, that is some okra. But anyway, I love good okra, fried okra, uh, pickled okra. It's just, it's real good stuff. And we, I do a cold, a, a cold pickling. That's what my mama called it. But anyway, I do that and it's uh, it's got a nice little sharp taste. I put cayenne peppers in there with it and just gives it a great flavor. But anyway, that's what's going on for the moment. I'm gonna get this stuff planted before the storms get on me. And uh, I will put these videos out as, I'm sorry I haven't been so late with my videos, but it's just been a lot of long hours and not near enough of me to go around. But all right, thanks for your patience. Bye.